Hello and welcome to Strike Your Gamers to another GBHL YouTube channel video. You are here with your channel host GBHL James and today I am joined by another special guest. We've been spoiled rotten lately. Um, I, that's no, that's no disrespect to Jamie. <laughs> uh, but we've had lots of new faces. New faces obviously are really cool because we get new answers. Some of you guys might recognise him and some of you may not. But it is... Matt, Generation Shift. It's Mr. Generation Shift, guys. Woo! Instant scouring of YouTube. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think you've had one before. To be yeah, honest. I think my uh, channel will be quite uh, annoyed because uh, I will have done more videos on this channel <laughs> than I've done <laughs> <laughs> recently. They're in the they're in the pipeline. I promise. Yeah, I've seen his phone. He's got lots and lots of content lined up for you guys, which is really cool. So yeah, this is Matt Davies of Generation Shift. Drop me in Shift. it. I know yeah. some of you might have met Matt as well at Redos. Did you enjoy Redos? Oh, it was amazing. Best one so far. Did you get a t-shirt? I didn't, sorry. It's okay, I've got one in there which is spare. One of mine which has uh, just got a few threads loose, so you can have that. I'll give that to you at the end for coming up today because we're going to be filming some battle reports. But before we do that, we are of course going to do Speak Friendly Question. Mm. Okay, so we've got the first question here. As it is your first time here, you get to read it out. Yes, okay, so that one? That one, the one at the, the bottom. The big one? The, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hey guys, just a comment in regards to the question answered last week, and uh, you mentioned using Lonely Nights Army Builder, and that is good points value, but doesn't uh, state the special rules. I'm 99% sure uh, it actually does. Um, have you used that? The Lonely Nights Army Builder? I've been on there before, uh, I can't remember why I went on there, but I have been on there before, and I have to say personally, I. I would rather have a source book all day long. Yeah. It's much, much easier to navigate. But having said that, if you can't get hold of a source book, it's a very, very good resource. Yeah, I could see the the, the good sort of points about mm -hmm. these sort of things. Because um, there was one I used to use when I was back in 40k and I was using it all the time. You used to play 40k? I used to, yeah. Do you still do it? Um, Have you still got any stuff? I've got still got some stuff, yeah, in my cool. cabinet, yeah. Uh, I used to collect a Tyranid army, uh, well, Space Marines. You could skip a 1500 point army of those? Uh, can I still? Yeah. Uh, possibly, yeah. I mean, you've got a load of marine stuff. Always thinking. Always uh, thinking. <laughs> yes, yeah, so army builders could be quite good, but we were saying yeah. we weren't sure whether that the the special rules were on Lonely Nights Army Builder. Um, but Top Table Wargaming, who is actually yeah. uh, our very own Steve Quo, who we love very, oh, very much. Hello, Steve. Yep, Top Table Wargaming is his, uh, his project in Altrincham. Um, he's saying that you can actually find it. Right, awesome. Well, anything's any kind of tool that's useful, you yeah. know, for, especially for the Hobbit. Always like that kind of stuff. Okay, so... He's 99% um, sure it actually does. Mm. There you go, guys. Um, and it's not just on the main page where you're choosing your units. If you scroll to the very end of the army faction options at the bottom of the page and you click forces of good or forces of evil, right. dependent of whether your force is good or evil, it tells you the special rules there. There you go, from Steve. You might have to check that out. A gift for the community from there you Steve. Go. Yeah. Uh, and if you scroll down even more, it gives you a description of the rule. It can be tricky to find as there are pages and pages of chaff coding. Yeah, that's what I found in the past. Okay. Um, but it's an easy way, an easy way to find it is to click page preview. Is it just for um I mean, kind of be used on iPads and stuff as well, because I know some of these apps don't have uh, problems. I've not got a clue. I don't think it's an app. I think it's a um, it's an actual spreadsheet. Oh, okay. So you should be able to look at it on a mm. on an app. Just as um, much as I know, guys. <laughs> um, the Army Builder should be used by everyone in the community, in my opinion, as it does all the work for you. Much love, Steve, aka Top Table War Gamer. See, but I love I love having a book. Yeah, I think use whatever you're, you know be comfortable with. Uh, I guess it's a, a very clear way of setting out your army, however I do like just scribbling on a piece of paper. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the same. I love scribbling. There are notepads in there which I've got. In fact, I've got work notepads which is really, like, it could be bad if I was bashful in any way about, about mm -hmm. my hobby these days, um, but like, if I turn over a page there will be like some kind of Gondor <laughs> theorised army list which is in there for... For me it's like the opposite, it's got like um, projects of sculpting and stuff, <laughs> any notepad, yeah. it's, yeah, just jot it down. It's part, it's part of the fun of being involved in the system. So there you go guys, if you can't find the source books, go and check out Lone Knights Army Builder uh, and maybe speak to Top Table Wargaming Steve because um, he can point you in a direction for finding some of the special rules. Uh, so thanks for that buddy, make sure you ask a question next week. Okay, okay so next up we've got Copenhagen Middle Earth Battle Gamers. Did we miss that one? Uh, it's just someone who commented on it. Alright, so you can do that one if you want. I've made it a bit right. bigger now. I have to 
I have to apologise, the writing was really small for, for Matt before and he struggled for it, so well done. Oh, okay. Uh, thanks for a little shout out. Uh, this is Battle Games Middle Earth, uh, Copenhagen, right? Uh, they in America? Sorry? Copenhagen Middle Earth War Game, right? Uh, Middle Earth Battle Gamers. They're in uh, Denmark. Oh, Denmark. Right. Denmark. Um, it was good to see those guys in the tournament. Yes, we had a couple of nice guys mm -hmm. over from Denmark, and there's even more of them coming to our event, you know, which is happening next October, which is effectively going to be bringing around lots of people from around the world. Um, more details of that is coming soon, so be patient, guys, because there will be a full video before Christmas. Mm. Right, so I think we're managing to steal the scouring of YouTube <laughs> this time. <laughs> I promised them I'd do it. Uh, Jay was in, did you see last week's Free Fantasy? I just saw it there, I think, yeah. Yeah, he, he managed to get himself in and get a, a scouring of YouTube. Mm. Um, so I suppose, I suppose we've got to give it to him. This is this week's The Scouring! Yes, of YouTube. Of YouTube. I nearly missed it then. And, uh, and it's Copenhagen Middle Earth Battle Gamers. Yeah. I have actually gone and seen these guys' content. It's very good. Mm. Yeah, they do some, and it's in English as well. Is it? Right. It's, it's in good. English. Um, so the battle report that I saw was uh, was pretty good. So is, there, is there a German channel that... Um, there is. Right, because the content looks great with that, but I don't you understand You can't understand it. Yeah. Yeah, the content looks really good. That's yeah. Oliver and Co from the Hobbit Tabletop Liga. Again, these guys are coming over. Oh, wow. Uh, as are these guys from Copenhagen. They're coming over next October. Great stuff. People travel from across the world, so... So they say, curse you, Guild Ball Informer. Jay Frenigan. Uh, I should also mention that we speak English on our videos, as you already mentioned. Yep. Uh, so you don't have to be Danish to enjoy our comment. Oh, the content's content. good. I also recognised a few uh, key catchphrases in there. <laughs> okay. They're definitely mine. <laughs> have you stolen them? No, listen, they are out there in the public domain. You guys can use them to your heart's content. It was. Uh, it, it brought, I have to say, a sense of familiarity when mm. I watched the battle report. It was, it was like watching a weird kind of slight alternate Reality, universe yeah. where I was actually Danish. Mm. <laughs> and therefore, the content was very, very, very good. So go and scout that channel. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a uh, link in the video description below. And uh, I want you to click on that link, go to that, uh, that battle report, watch the battle report so you can see how good the content is, and then uh, leave a comment to say that you've come from the GBHL podcast. So that is this week's The Scouring of YouTube. There we go. So thanks for that, Copenhagen Middle Earth Battle Gamers. Uh, next up we've got Andreas, the Norwegian Viking. He's put a couple of, oh, and just so that you know, uh, I have posted out your swag bag that you bought, Andreas, so, mm. so, so that you know. Um, also, oh no, sorry, he's done two comments. Uh, I went the entire episode frightened and hiding under blanket. Your costumes were so horrifying, I almost saw it myself. Wow. <laughs> See, I read this comment before. <laughs> <laughs> well... I, I didn't realise I didn't see it, it. sorry. I what, what were you wearing? This. Like that? Yeah, it's been clean, just so you all know. <laughs> That's okay. been washed. Uh, I think it's because he was expecting it to be Halloween content oh, because right, it would have okay. come out. So you were dressed Halloween. as yourself? Dressed as myself. Maybe you are dressed as an alternate reality of yourself. I bet you dressed up at Halloween. Did you dress up no, at Halloween? No, I don't. No? No. You didn't go, you didn't go and trick and treat? Didn't go and get yourself some sweets? No. <laughs> I did. Anybody who's on my Facebook will have said, do you see my... I think I saw, yeah. Was it... Yeah. A, what was it again? Uh, <laughs> I, I was a zombie prom queen. Right, I thought it was... Any excuse to wear a dress? Feminine. Yeah. It certainly was. Jane came in and... Uh, you looked phenomenal. Thank you. I actually thought I looked like my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> 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 I, I did. I said that to Jane. I said, I said, God, this is really scary because I look like my ex. Wow. Um, but I came, I came in through the front door and... Jane was like, I've got your Halloween costume, which never happens. Like, okay. yeah. She was like, I've got your Halloween costume, and it was like this surgeon, like a, a zombie surgeon. And I was like, oh, are you joking? Because normally I'd like wear some like kids superhero costume or something. So I've heard. Yeah, it's good fun. Um, and I was like, what are you wearing? And she was going as a, as a zombie prom queen, so I thought, I'm, I've got to get, my, got my, get myself in some of that. So I wore that and uh, boogied the night away at Amici's. Standard, it was awesome. Amici's is awesome. Uh, he's also put Daniel Craig, the best Bond. You must be joking. Who's your favourite Bond? See, I'm not a massive Bond fan. I'm sorry. No. I haven't really seen many Bonds. How long are you in for? Hello, <laughs> right, yeah. Um, so, it's kind of between Pierce Brosnan and Daniel Craig. I can see how Daniel Craig's more spy-ish and kind of... Um, 
but he's a bit, edges. he's quite a bit of a like a thuggish as well, isn't he? Really, he can. Whereas uh, Pierce Brosnan is a bit more suave. Yeah, I, I think if you're going to liken them both, if you're going to liken them to two sort of um, sides of Bond or two sort of ideas of what Bond should be, yeah, you would definitely say that Daniel Craig is more from the school. Um, it's oh, more of Sean Connery. Bond as well. Well, yeah. he is. Yeah, he's, he's, we were saying last week that it's very. Um, it's a little bit more Jason Bourne, but he's very much more like Sean Connery, with that kind of rough around the edges. You kind of believe that he is sort of ex SAS and yeah. can do the job. You know that they've got to do. Yeah, he's battle hardened. Yeah. Whereas Pierce Brosnan is a bit more of the suave kind of Roger Moore Bond. Mm. You know, and Roger, but Roger Moore and Sean Connery. A bit more of an English gentleman. Than very, very much, very mean, much. Yeah. Um, but those those two are my favourite bonds, Sean Connery and, uh, and Roger Moore. Yeah. Uh, so cheers for that, Andreas, and uh, and then he's put another comment, if you want to read that one out. Where's that? That one okay. there. Also, Lord of the Rings Hobbit is not gone from the store as a as a rule. Uh, it is up the managers up to the managers to keep uh, it or have it online only. Yeah, so, so was this part of last week or Yeah, so uh, somebody Somebody mentioned sort of the future of um, of the game and games workshops, and uh, it actually brought about the the topic of the planter, which oh, right. goes up today, okay. but actually will have gone up in this video a couple mm -hmm. of days ago, because um, well, me and Jamie had to film the weird time travel right. thing of, of these shows. Um, we actually talked about it, and we did address it there actually that you know yes, it is up to the managers apparently whether to keep it or not, but. I imagine that a lot of them very soon will be making the decision to remove it. Okay. And uh, anybody who watched the plant yeah. here will see why. Because so. my local one still has uh, all the Hobbit stuff in still. Yeah, I think it depends very much on, on, on the, uh, yeah. the sales for it. Mm. Um, but I think that's going to change soon. And on the manager, whether he's into it himself. Yeah, that is that is a part of it as well. Uh, so thank you very much for your comments, Andreas. Make sure you ask one next week. Next up, we've got David Whitaker. He's put, The Hobbits is not out of all GW stores. There's a pretty good amount in GW Nottingham and a bit in Warhammer World too. It's down to the store managers, but there's no obligation to have it on the shelves, which is why it's gone in a few small little stores. Well, like anything, it depends on the market. And it's more likely to be in places like Nottingham. Of course it is. Of course it is, because it's the kind of big sort of flagship, flagship yeah. places. Yeah. Um, but it, it's going to come down to whether a store sells it or not, and if they don't sell it, then I guess they'll be like, well, why would I have shelf space yeah. for that? And like I say, with some of the things which are coming up, which we discussed on Friday, I imagine that it will be going from most shelves soon. Mm. Um, so next up, we've got Jay Clare, the lovely Jay Clare. Hey, Nottingham himself. Nottingham himself, yeah. Yeah, so... Ah, doing a Jay Clare, love it. Uh, you know so... what it's a reference to? Okay, go for it, I don't know. It's a reference to... I should watch more of these. <laughs> <laughs> don't say that. That implies there are people in the world who don't watch Speak Men in Question. Who would that be? I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. I have no they, idea. They need to be shot. Doing a J. Clare is like bringing something which you don't normally see that often and then seemingly doing quite well with it. So, for example, okay. he brought a all Mahood camel okay. army. Oh, with the blowpipes. Uh, that was one tournament he did. He might have done, yeah. yeah. I know that he did one where it was all camels, he might have done one where it was some on foot as well. Yeah. And he did quite well with it. And of course, he um, has got a very competitive Lake Town army, which you don't see very yeah. often. <coughs> uh, which is... <laughs> have you played that? No, uh, have you seen his latest? Well, one of his armies was uh, Alfred, then he had Lady of, um, Galadriel, Lady of Light, mm -hmm. some, new, some Arnold, Men of Arnold, a Kazakh Guard, uh, Dwelling or oh, no Balin, did, yeah, he did, did that, like a mix. He did that at mix. Stockport, not Redos, but the one yeah, earlier in the year. Yeah, because it was definitely one I went to, I think. It, it was one in April. Yeah, because the first one I went to was where he brought his late town on. Yeah. And the second one, I think he brought that. Yeah, I'm sure he brought that earlier in the year in April. Yeah. Um, so what else has he put? Uh, okay, I have a question for you guys. I hope it hasn't been asked before. Which characters do you believe are underrated in SBG, and who would you like to see Ooh. more of at GBHL events? Cheers, guys. Jay. Gandalf on cart. Yeah? You think he's underrated? He's fun. Or would you like to see more of him? I'd just like to see more of him. Yeah, I'd like to see more of him. I think it's easier to answer who would you like to see more of yeah. than it is to answer who's underrated, because I think we have spoke about this before, and that is that the game's been around a long time. Mm. Um, so people tend to know sort of the strengths and weaknesses and... 
Um, you know, on the whole now. Yeah. And what's underrated? Um, Cardish. Don't see a lot of Cardish, and yeah, there's some couple of little tricks that I, you do with him. I, I was awesome with him. Yeah, I get the last tournament I played at. Um, I think in one game I got um, four sums of ale with him. What? What? Um, fireball. Because you just take uh, take orcs to drain dice three will. Uh, you gain back and then you just fireball people. It's so funny. Uh, I fireballed Gandalf a few times, got a wound, and then get, just getting his will down. Yeah. Just constantly draining orc, fireball. Doesn't matter because you bring. I brought another shaman as well, being a bit cheesy, but uh, I did. I did bring a bolt thrower there, so just to be fun. <laughs> but it's well. great. Um, just I just love the fact that. With orcs, it doesn't really matter if you can just kill one of your guys just to get a bit of will back and just fireball someone. It's fun. I've only ever seen one other person mm. bring Kardashian to myself. Yeah, the only problem is his defence is one less. But yeah. you just got to get keep him hidden. Doesn't matter if he's just keep him behind the lines because he can still fireball people yeah. within six inches. Strength six hit. Uh, cost of a normal shaman. Pretty good. I think the only other person I've uh, seen is is more. Quinn Duggan. Quinn Duggan has brought him before. With his Moranans. With his Moranans, yeah. yeah. Right. He's brought him with his Moranans. He's done quite well with that army before, hasn't he? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a pretty competitive army. He's yeah. quite good at list building. He's just a terrible player. Isn't that right, Quinn? Yeah. Beat him at again last night. Mm. Uh, does that feel better to actually beat him now, then? <laughs> well, you know, it's my job to support the Hobbit Hobby, so whenever I've lost, it's obviously to encourage people to, to yeah. get involved in the game. That's the only reason why I've ever lost. <laughs> tactical, tactical loss. <laughs> like to get in the second <laughs> turn. Um, things that I would like to see a little bit more of. I think, I think, like you say, things like Gandalf and Car is a good shout because you don't, you don't the see cool them. It's cool. that you don't see. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's. You it's see, a, I'm, I'm a big fluffy player. Just don't, don't. If something looks cool, try and put it in an army. Yes. Yeah. And if we all play it like that, we don't see a lot. You, got you don't see a lot of like Elrons and stuff like that, do you? Really? No, the different versions. You don't, yeah. you don't see a lot of um, a lot of Elrond because that's this a seemingly better choices. So maybe it'd be nice to see a couple of those. Um, we tend to see sort of. Don't really see like the great beast and stuff like that. No, I think I've only ever seen the great beast at one tournament. That's a lovely model. It's a really nice model. Yeah. So things like that are a bit rare. Um, other things. I'm watching the water as well. You don't see that one. I've seen the watcher a couple of times. Yeah. I've I've not seen much of Sauron. I've I've seen him once or twice, but I've not seen much of Sauron. Yeah. I think it's quite cool when you see see him on the table because mm. you know that that's sort of got don't, a bit of a cool factor to it. Don't often see Castellans, do you? More no, blades, no, and no. they can be really quite deadly if you use them well. Be. It's supposed to be quite expensive, though, aren't they? Yeah, uh, that's the only thing. But they can be really deadly. Yeah, with the more blades, just. And I'd like to see more, just sort of non-elite spammy um, Gondor yeah. armies and stuff, you know, because because it looks cool. Yeah, I, I think, think it looks cooler when you've got a few elites. Yeah, and then. The normal troops. That's right, yeah. I think the normal troops are really good looking anyway. Yeah. That's, that's probably what I'd like to see more in terms of being underrated. I mean, you could talk about that sort of stuff all day, couldn't of course, you? Of course you could. Yeah. That's the thing with speak for any question, especially with myself. You've got to fight, wrap it up and go to the next question. <laughs> um, and then we've got David Whitakers, but since you were discussing 350 to 400 point lists, here's a really bad list which I would love to take at 400 points. It's got Feely, Keely, Bofa, Oin, Tariel, Legolas, Armour and Cloak, 400 points themed around Bard's house in Oh, okay, you're right, I guess. That's, that's pretty cool. That is really cool. I'd like to see them all on uh, wooden bases as well. <laughs> that would be cool. Um, he's put, uh, are there any themed armies you'd love to run but don't because they'd get smashed? You, I don't think you wouldn't, wouldn't run something no, because you'd get smashed. Uh, to be honest, I, I, as I don't play a lot of tournament games, um, I, I have loads of ideas about armies I'd like to run. Like, one. One is because uh, I, I want to convert to Thorngill. Oh, that'd be cool. yeah! I've got all the pieces I've had them for ages ready to make. Um, Christmas. So that'll be uh, not that far away. Uh, no, no chance. I know. <laughs> no chance. I meant Christmas 2017. <laughs> Try 18. <laughs> um, but like, I'd love to do a, a Thorngill's uh, riders. So back mm. when Theoden was a kid. When Aragorn rode out with Thengel, and that'll be a really cool army. You proxy Theoden as Thengel. Yeah. 
and then include Aragorn and just some Rise of Rohan and yeah. stuff like that. That'd be awesome. As oh, well as that'd be cool. So that's one of my ideas I've wanted to do. Um, but obviously, 600, 700 points. You're not going to be getting a lot of people in there with Aragorn and Theoden, are you? But I think the thing is, with, with lists like that, because you know I've got some ideas for lists like that. Um, you know, yes, they're, they're probably not going to be massively competitive. But if you bring a list like that, you 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 don't care whether it gets smashed or not. So I don't think there's the I don't think there are any themed armies I'd like to run, but I don't because I think they they get smashed. Um, it's just that you know if I've gone to a particular tournament, it depends what I'm going to a tournament for, I suppose. Um, I really like the idea of doing like all mounted grey company forces. Yeah. So you good. use as a basis of if you use the twins with no armor. You could use the dead with that as well, couldn't you? You could do, although mm. I'm not a massive fan of no. uh, of, uh, of them. <laughs> and the models, or the models, and also their their role in the movie in the end. Yeah. I'm not a huge fan of them sort of arriving at Pelham all the way that they did. Mm. Um, but I can see why it was done. Um, but I'd really like as a basis. I think it comes to 500 points if you take uh, the twins. Um, you don't give them armor. No. Um, you give them horses and a bow. Because um, they wouldn't really have. I, th I couldn't imagine them without the armour. Yeah. Well, if, well, if you're doing a grey company, you yeah. can say, right, okay, take Light the travel. It's also because it's 500 points, and then you've got, if you put Halbrad mm -hmm. on a horse with the banner, a bar when you yeah. start, again, something you would probably not take. I mean, it's okay, but you probably wouldn't take because it's quite expensive if you're being competitive. And then you take Aragorn, Strider, and you do put him on a horse, and you do give him armour and a bow. Uh, and I believe that those four models together come to 500 points. So I think that'd be quite cool. Let's do that. But another idea is to do that as a base and at larger points cost. Is just have loads of mounted rangers of the north. It'd be a very elite so force. Cool. Yeah, it would be cool. It would be very very cool. You know, of course, those <laughs> those are going to allow you to get broken quite easy. But I'm not sure. I wouldn't take. It's not a case that I wouldn't take it because it's not competitive. It's just it's a nice themed army that when yeah. I get around to painting it, I'll probably do some stuff with it. Um, so thank you very much for that, David Whittaker. So next one's for you. We've got Jericho Jackson. Okay. So thanks for your thoughts on my list last week. You convinced me to not drop in a shade. That's good. <laughs> uh, you the shade that you did for me is beautiful. Yeah, I bought, I bought mine as well today. Uh, still, I was pretty uh, surprised how filthy you made it out to be. Uh, the troops were all cor corsairs. Really? Shade and corsair? Shame. Reavers. Shame on you. He said they were all Corsairs, yeah, they were all Corsair Reavers. It is cheesy. Without, <laughs> what you say, buddy. With axes, really. Uh, I don't think he's said whether he's converted them to have axes yes, or not, they but have. If he's done, if he's Jericho, done if you've well. converted uh, Corsairs, do your Corsairs have axes or not? I don't want to prejudge. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, you've made me look bad now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, my, my Corsairs yeah. are, are done with the axes from um, my Warriors of Erebor. Hmm, there we go. Um, so, the troops were all Corsairs, led by a Corsair captain. Uh, and the Knight of Umbar. Um, Who conveniently brought his friend the Shadow Lord to right, get two models. Okay. Yeah, conveniently he brought his friend the Shadow Lord. It's very easy to explain. Were they having a sleepover or and, something? <laughs> and create, it's easy to create fluff and create a theme for an army yeah. to cover, cover cheese. But there's nothing, the, uh, remember, there's nothing wrong with taking cheese. It's just, you've just got to admit onto the fact that if you take a shade with Corsair Reavers, that is pretty cheesy and filthy. I mean, have you seen uh, the conversions? Um, and Billy had the idea as well as uh, Steve Crow with the Golden, um, yeah. the golden King. Yeah, uh, the, the Goblin King. Converted. Doing the Goblin King and convert it up so it looks like a big Abracan guard. Yeah. Abracan guard guy, and then get that in so that you've got an absolutely solid hero mm. leader. So, and then, well, you know, because you've done the conversion. I mean, it's a sweet conversion. It's gorgeous. Mm. It's gorgeous. And there's nothing wrong with it. It is just incredibly filthy, no matter how you try and explain it. <laughs> it's, it just is. Uh, you make your own stories up. Go for it. Yeah, yeah. If it makes you feel better. <laughs> um, this week, my question is whether, uh, whether cavalry get an extra attack versus monsters. Yes. Mm. Uh, not monstrous mounts, but against monsters, they do get plus one. Yeah, and monstrous mounts get an extra attack versus cavalry. Yeah, no, they, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they get yeah, one they get knocked Yeah. Super. Um, so yeah. On page fifty-two of the main rule book, it says when cavalry charges, a uh, foot model 
Uh, it gains the extra attack and knockdown bonuses. So yes, we've already said. Um, and on page nine is Rubuk. Rubuk. Uh, it describes three types of models in a game that are infantry, cavalry, and monsters. So he's basically just saying, yeah. Yeah, so it says, it says that models who fight on foot are infantry, which would suggest cavalry only get the attack and not down versus infantry and not monsters. Mm -hmm. uh, no, uh, they, they get the extra okay. attack versus monsters, but they don't get the knockdown on monsters because they're not a high enough strength. Yeah, right, okay. Um, so it all strength based? Isn't it? It's strength orientated, so um, for a cavalry to get a knockdown versus a monster, it would have to be a higher strength than the monster. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why monstrous mounts like horned fell beasts can be quite good at. Um, I think it's horned fell beasts which have got the extra strength. They're the ones that can sort of knock down a lot of other sort of strength six monsters. What's the highest strength cavalry model? The highest strength cavalry, monstrous cavalry, or actual. Either, I guess. Um, off the top of my head, strength four from uh, Wog Marauders and Sons of Ale. Alright. Off the top of my head. Now would uh, would a heroic strike affect that? You mean a piercing strike? Yes. Piercing no, no, because it goes off the base. Right. It goes off the base. I'm pretty sure. Uh, so cheers for that. Uh, so next up we've got Wah! and he's put. I did it. I caved. I finally cracked open the screws from the start box and yeah. now I'm working on it. Uh, he's working on the Goblin King, Grinner, the Scribe, Gollum. Thirty six goblins all have axes or picks. 11 have double handed axes, plus an additional 12 goblins, something full. Can you have that? Um, double handed axes, don't they all just count as having a hand weapon? Um, no, I think some of, I think you can have, you can take a two handed weapon with goblins. I think it's an option. Do the Goblin Town goblins? Goblin Town goblins, I think so. I don't think it is. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe. I can check. So you think nay, and I think yeah. yay, so heroes and villains of Middle-earth. Because that's an extra point, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's an extra yeah. point for a two-handed weapon for them. I'm pretty sure that you can take two-handed weapons with them. But we're about to find out for mm. you, pal. Look at this, you never get this on speed panel question. Research! <laughs> Normally we just muddle by. Uh, now the thing is with Heroes and Villains PDF is because it's so huge, it takes ages to load even if you've got a good internet connection. Um, so here we go. <laughs> Great really content. Covered. Great content, okay. Yeah. Scroll, scroll, scroll. No, don't scroll. Do, Struggle do, loading. Do, 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 do. Oh, it went, it went right down to the bottom. Okay. Right. Um, um, those are army lists. Come on. Get in there, guys. We get in there. Profiles. Oh, oh we're nearly there. Yeah, yeah. Goblin Town, two hundred oh, extra point. Oh, my apologies. That's just my veteran skills there of speed friendly question. Um, so, yep, he can do that. Um, I didn't realise that. Uh, and he's leaving a plus an additional 12 goblins for his son in Paul because of the I don't often see people take two handed axes with them. Or because people usually just use yeah. one handed, mm. one handed um, picks and stuff to piercing strike with. Um, he's put, as my 400 points list for an upcoming uh, 800 points doubles event, and his partner is bringing Mordor. I think that'd be very competitive. Yeah. My only saving grace is I refuse to ally in Moria to get those cheeky Seamans into the list. Good, Good guy. Good, we like you. Good man. Yeah. Uh, on you to this all week's. all the axes you want now. Yeah. On to this week's loop sustaining question. We now have a fairly substantial gaming community, that's great to hear, and we have a fair whack of connections to gaming groups worldwide. Mm -hmm. Do you think it'd be worth the time and effort for the GBHL to spearhead a petition? Let's gather a shed loads of names, let's present it to GW to get a final FAQ update. Present them with a list of more commonly asked FAQs and strange things with possible answers. And let's see if this will prompt someone to give us a final update before final curtains. If you do this, please have them update Thor to have a shield as part of his war gear, update Dwarling to have the ability to use two axes or his hammer, update Dwarf Captain of Erebor list uh, to have an option to purchase an additional axe for five points. Uh, maybe I'm an eternal optimist, but it's got to be worth a shot. Well, I'm not sure about that last one with your uh, Dwarf Captain of Erebor list. Um, it's just for the model, isn't it? It's just for the model, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't think you would gain an extra attack by having yeah. that, buddy. Um, 
Okay, so I've got a couple of points here. That would be very taken if it was. Yes, it would. Yeah, it would. It would. Five points for an extra attack. Yeah. All day long. It'd be ten points, wouldn't it, really? Yeah. Um, so, first of all, this kind of happened not so yeah. long ago. Um, we're very, very lucky that on the Great British Hobbit League Facebook group, so if any of you guys out there aren't on that, it doesn't matter if you're not part of the Great British Hobbit League or you live elsewhere, there are guys from all over the world on that chat, on, on that page, is go on there and in the pinned description you will find a community FAQ. And that's because after the last uh, lot of revisions, or even before that, so before the last lot of revisions, a bunch of sort of questions were put to Games Workshop and there are a lot of them which they just kind of were like, look, we're not even going to bother answering that. Yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty clear. Obvious, yeah. You know, don't, don't, you know, don't be silly because you know these things come up. Um, but some of them just did to do with slight wording, isn't it? Yeah, Sometimes. stuff like that. They're like, you know, it's pretty clear how it's intended, and that's that's a key thing here, is that we're always very quick to go on words as written as war gamers, but actually with Games Workshop, a lot of it is look, it's intended to be this way. Mm. And then they actually did um, answer a bunch of questions. A guy called Simon Grant is on the Great British Hobbit League page and he actually works for Games Workshop and he stays and he, he keeps an eye and he is very, very kind enough to comment on things that get submitted to the community FAQ yeah. um, when they're maybe less straightforward. It's great to have that official. Um, input. Of course it is, because of course people argue one way and the other, but as soon as you get that person on Games Workshop who's involved in the right rules right in saying, look, this is the way it is, then that's great. Um, now, just because we've told you that he's on there, do not hound him because you will scare him away. If you send him a message or tag him in a post... We will find you. Yeah, um, we won't be very happy because we want to keep him um, here, and of course if he gets hounded then he's not going to. Um, but that's been really, really good. So what I do suggest is that anybody out there is that if there are questions that you're not sure about then I would say go and check out the Great British Hobbit League mm. community FAQ because that's kind of the things that have been cleared up since the last standard FAQ now whether they'll do a, a final one or not I've got no idea but I doubt at this point that they will pay someone to do that yeah. no matter how many people petition and you've got things to do with wording but then you've also got the yeah like the updates to a people's profile and I can't see that happening. No, I don't think I don't think no. some of those things are gonna happen. But I admire your enthusiasm while. And you know, there's always talk and whenever the official input stops, um, whether things can be changed community wise, because the majority of the community is actually on the group, isn't it? And you um, I think the Facebook group's got about 1,500. Mm. The podcast right. has got over 4,000 now. Yes. So the podcast has probably got a little bit more of an audience. But I would suggest anybody out there who's subscribed and, and hasn't liked that page, go and like that page um, because there are a lot of <laughs> there are a lot of people with better minds than, than I and others who discuss things to do with rules and profiles and things on there. And it's a really good sort of way of getting mm. instant responses as well. So go and check that out. Uh, you've also continued your question. Uh, you fellows emailed me an age ago as I wanted to buy some magazines and have them shipped to Canada. Then I forgot, and uh, then I got a baby and forgot my name, let alone remembering to organ the magazines. Now it's you want to sort Congratulations. <laughs> we have three confirmed people who would purchase a reprint as well as issue one, uh, issue two. So issue three. one is gone now. Yeah. Uh, have you got it? I've got it, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. It's a really good cavalry article in there. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Written by Jamie Gibbon. <laughs> 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 um, we could send funds in advance or place a deposit as we would love to collect the magazines. Even better, a subscription so we don't miss out on this side of the world. Uh, you could hold on to them as I'm trying my best to make it back to the UK and attend the GBHL event in 2016. Well, that would be good because mm -hmm. if you're coming in October, we have got people travelling around the world. There are tournaments every single month across the country. And if it doesn't fit to come to ours, go to those. But that's a good one to come to. Uh, either way, three confirmed sales here, and then you've given your email address in case uh, they want to email. Even though one sold out, it's let them know you're still interested because they're building up it. You know, and do remember that the SBG magazine is separate from the GBHL mm. podcast. Okay, so um, that was set up by. GBHL Damien and GBHL Tom. I think before that they were GBHL hosts. Yeah. Or maybe, well, they had maybe this Damien, idea, I think. I think Damien, Damien had just become a GBHL host, maybe. Or he was on his way. Oh, no, no, I don't think he was. This was before they were hosts. So, um, speak for any question 
it's probably not the best place to ask them. Um, what I suggest you do is email sbgmagazine at gmail.com. So if anybody's got any questions about SBG Magazine, email it to sbgmagazine uh, at gmail.com and Tom probably will get back to you. Yeah. In terms of whether they would whether three would be enough, not unless you pay significantly more, because the only reason people can get the price that they're getting is because of the larger print run. Um, and to get costs down, I think that you have to be ordering like 50 plus at a time. Um, but you never know, they might be able to do it for you. Uh, and I think the idea of subscriptions is a great idea, but with them not having set release dates, dates for the magazine. It's very tricky, to imagine. That would be tough, you'd have to pay like, because what if you paid a yearly subscription for four magazines a year and they did they could only do three or you know I think it'd be quite tough. Um, but anyway, thank you very much for your question. So next up we've got Michael Purcell. Okay, hi G B H L. Uh, loving the channel, especially the 500 points from Rohan. I love the idea of the Battle Company campaign, but can't find any rules. Uh, could point? Could you point uh, me in the right direction? Certainly can. Um, so oh, darn, is the One Ring still down? Are you, are you on the one ring? Me? One, one ring. ring. Oh, it's, oh, it's, it's back up. Up. That's good. Okay. So what I would like you to do is, let's see. Uh, is it on here? I'm sure it's, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Okay. So I'm sure that you need to go onto the one ring. So it's, um, www.one-ring.co.uk that's a forum and I believe that the rules for battle companies are situated on there in the articles Tomes of Wisdom I think it is yeah. is that right? Tomes of, wis Tomes of Wisdom so. Board Index? No Portal? No Tomes of Wisdom? No idea um, but the battle companies rules from Urian Uri Urian? Urion, I think his name is. Um, what I suggest you do is if you go to our original Battle Companies campaign, so check back through the foot, uh, the uh, content, I'm pretty sure there is there are links to it in the video descriptions. So that's the original Battle Company. So go and check out our original Battle Company series um, where we have the dwarves and the goblins, giblins, goblins, and uh, is there a loyal. playlist of them? There is a playlist of them, yeah. So definitely worth watching through those, but I'm sure the link is in the video description below. But if not, go on to the oneringcouk because uh, I'm sure that they are on there somewhere, although I can't find them now. Um, so thank you very much for that, Michael Purcell. Next up, we've got 19 Mark F91. You know so this is, don't you? Uh, do I? Yeah. I should do, shouldn't I? Yeah, he's in speak friend question last time. He was at, he was at um, Stockport at Redos as well. You know who I mean. Not Jay. No, no Jay, the other lad. Oh. Who's in... Um, Speak fan question. You're making me look bad now. Yes. Mark. Mark. Well, that makes yep. sense. And this is him. That would make sense. <laughs> <laughs> so it's 19 Mark F91. Okay. Um, hi guys. Cheers for having me over last week. Um, it was a pleasure. Thank you very much for coming down and uh, coming to my house and drinking my tea and filming some battle reports with yeah, us. Yeah, you did that downstairs, didn't you? You did that. That's mm. where we're going to be doing that soon. Awesome. Um, does heroic strike ha um, heroic striking happen before or after any modifications to your fight value? For example, uh, fighting someone wearing the one ring or a bat swarm, etc. Thanks. Okay, I believe um, I believe it it's happens after. after. Yeah, I see it. I believe it happens after. So, um, it's, if you. Let's say, for example, a bat swarm comes into you and you are um, fight six. It takes you down to three. But if you heroic strike, um, then you go. Yeah. You you go from your six, but then you half that. Mm. So I think it halves it at the end of it. I'm pretty sure that's the right answer. Mm. So sometimes you just there's no point heroic strike. Sometimes it's not yeah. worth heroic striking if you're not high enough in the first place. Because I think that if you're up against something which is fight six. I think that's the thing. If you're up against something which is fight six, there's never a point of heroic striking because the highest you can ever be is fight five. Yeah. And that's why I'm pretty sure it happens after. Um, so I hope I'm right. If I'm not right, I'm sure that somebody will absolutely jump on the opportunity to tell me that I'm wrong in the video description below. Straight away. They will have done it now. <laughs> uh, so cheers for that and uh, thanks for coming down. You're always welcome to my house to film that report, so let me know. Uh, so next up we've got Mike, uh, Mikhail Bo Bojan. 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 
This was thanks for the episode. Absolute pleasure. My first question: What do you think is the best tactic against awful shoot and run armies like Wall Mounted Rohan and Riverdale mm. Knights? Is it, for example, better to spread your army or keep it in one place? Get an all-mounted shooting army. <laughs> that, that can help. That's the best tactic. Um, really, really good things against those are casters. So wizards. You're going to be Nazgul. wanting to cast blinding light. And, yeah. Blind, blinding light. Um, blinding light or shadow. Shadow good for that. Yeah. Things that are fast. Fell beasts are great. Yeah, uh, are great on this. Lines. Yeah. Um, mounted wizards who can sorceress blast. So mounted Saruman. Um, having blinding light can help. Um, splitting up is not a good idea. Bolt throwers. If you watch through a lot of my early battle reports, um, like really early, when we first started the channel. Um, Son of Earl. Son of Earl. Back, back in the days <laughs> of Son of Earl, not Son of Ale. Yeah. Um, if you watch those, what you'll notice is one of the reasons why I won most of the time was that my opponents would split their army so and they would split their army to kind of chase you down so you know a lot of people would be oh well you just stand back and shoot the whole game and run away and mm. I think there was a couple where that happened but it didn't happen that often what would happen is that they would try and chase me down and I would be able to focus all 500 points of my army on 250 points of their army um, so yeah I think really good things are monstrous mounts for this blinding light or pool of darkness can be helpful um, or uh, compel can be quite good as well because you can, you can compel someone out and you can get something on that, that's good and then hurl it, monsters are very good against it um, and to be fair, if they're sitting back and shooting Fell, yeah, fell light would be useful but it's only 6 inches isn't it? it's only 6 inches, yeah um, if they're sitting back and shooting, Rohan in particular, it depends on your defence of course but sitting back and shooting the game probably in tournament settings isn't going to go on long enough for them to be able to to break you or to kill it. at some point they're going to have to commit so the key thing is not making a mistake before that focus on the objectives yeah. um, you know these armies aren't necessarily as good at dominating the objectives so if you focus on the objectives let them pepper away and you know if you've got something to counter with them with then brilliant but let them pepper away and focus on the high ground focus on hold ground focus on depends what your army's like if you've got like a squishy orc army and you want to be trying to attack well yeah. Them. But if you've got dwarves, it doesn't matter so much because you've got the higher defence to combat the, the peppering. Of course it does. Um, so in that case, if you've got a softer army, things like Pool of Darkness become even yeah. more important. Fell Beasts become even more important. Things like drums, um, drums for it marching, mm -hmm. they're all good. Yeah, that's something I'd like to see more. But the, some drums. Like yeah, I played I played against them. Drummer. Was he like? Was he a captain drummer? He's like an orc drummer. Has he got like a hero profile? He's got one fate. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I played against him. He's got higher strength as well. I played against um, a black guard of Baradura well. army mm. that had a shade in it, and it had um, okay. it had a drummer, and I played it at, to the death in at the Nova Open. Really nice guy, but I think he realised part way through that he he couldn't win the game. Mm. And what did I? Why? Because target priority was that drummer. Because the drummer was meaning that he could move f faster than I could when he did his marches and stuff, I think it was, so... Yeah, he had to take some them. big distances with the drummer. Certainly can, okay, so thank you very much for that, Mikael. Uh, next up we've got Nalister. Okay. Uh, hi James, thanks for the tip. Uh, I'm trying to keep my list under wraps, as they're not very competitive, and I haven't played a game since the before the big rulebook. So, uh, I need any edge you can get. <laughs> We're just... I'm just going to let you know now, buddy, is that people, so he, he, he's coming to Sterling. Okay. People aren't going to change. There's a couple of, if you if you come and you smash everybody, then people will, will start thinking, ooh, that's just... Dave Nolan's put up his list, hasn't he, on that little video? No, it could be, a, I don't know. Um, it could be, but it could be a misleading thing, you never know. Oh, you know. I don't think so with Dave Nolan. Um, I think he's done that to try and create the idea that he is taking something different. But for example, I'm quite happy to tell you what my army is there because I, I couldn't care less. <laughs> it's a game. <laughs> um, yeah, if you're tailing to one army, that's... I'm taking Rivendell Knights, I'm taking Legolas, I'm taking uh, Mounted, Mounted Legolas, I'm taking Mounted Saruman the White, and I'm taking Mounted Gandalf, and that's my good army. And my evil army is a third Ferals and Berserkers, a third Crossbowmen, a third Sword and Shield Orcs, Saruman and Grima, Saruman on a horse, 
Orc Captain with Shield and Heavy Armor. Uruk Shaman, oh, sorry, not Orc Captain, uh, Uruk Captain, Shield and Heavy Armor. Uruk Shaman, and also Vrasku. That's it, there you go. That that sounds I like don't lose any, I'm not losing any edge because who would change that army to play against little old me? Um, so anyway, you put, hopefully, yeah, suffice to say, they're both fluffy and I've not seen them often, but his arms. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I always like to see stuff that you haven't seen before. Yeah. Um, for fluffy rules, there was uh, some great ones when Battle Games of Middle Earth were released for models uh, that didn't have profiles yet. Also, with some of the White Dwarfs, some of the earlier ones, uh, when they released those, the uh, Black Numenorians, there was uh, yeah, yeah, there was a great Black Root Veil, vale, and they did the Five Tums. Cool. Yeah, that was a cool uh, issue. They had all the different five tombs and then a hero to go with them, which was really cool. There we go. Um, so, um, if you can find that old white dwarf, that's a very good issue. Um, where were we? For fluffy rules, they were, um, yes, okay, that hadn't been released yet. Harmer got a free heroic combat to rescue Theoden if he was in danger. That's cool. Um, getting his head bitten off by it. Um, <laughs> by work. Uh, and Ugluk uh, had to pass a courage test to kill one of your own orcs. He still got that. Ugluk no, no, it wasn't. He had to pass a courage test. What he can do is he can choose to kill. Um, he can choose to kill an orc to automatically pass okay. pass oh, a courage right, test. Yeah, of course. Um, good and way around. Provide the stand the stand fast. Right? Yeah. Another way to combat list tailoring would be uh, to have more missions uh, missions listed rather than used. Uh, example, eight scenarios in a rule pack, six random, randomly ones used. Okay. So the idea is so that, because a lot of time people pull up a rules pack and people know what they're going to be playing in the first game, know what they're going to be playing as the last game, so as such they put their list up accordingly. And there is an argument there to have random um, scenarios. That would be interesting, yeah. You have a yeah. list and then you roll, like a one big roll for the whole hall. That would be interesting. Yeah, I think I think that that is a... That is a, a a good idea ish ish I think it's a good idea ish I like I like the idea that, that there are more scenarios than get but I think that you'd have to uh, also put them in maybe in categories as well because what you could end up okay. in a situation is you get lots more scenarios which favor numbers or if you know if, if you're all hero and the final game is randomly drawn it's Lord of Battle then you're immediately in maybe if you had like a the first and last ones fixed, and then all the ones. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Maybe like first and last yeah. ones fixed in some way, or at least they could be chosen from a category of scenarios yeah. which are a little bit more balanced and don't particularly favour one side more than another. Mm. I think that's that could be a good way of doing it. You know. Um, for this week, my question is: um, What is the model you've most enjoyed painting, and why? Sorry about the rambling content uh, comment. Uh, thank you for making great videos. You're very You're welcome. welcome. So, you first. Uh, Favourite model paint to paint? Favourite model to paint was by far Mounted Legless. I thought it might be. It was, it was a, a joy. It's, I, I couldn't believe it yeah. either. I was really surprised. And I think part of it is because I'd spent so long like getting through batches of, of troop cavalry. Painting batches of troop cavalry and their dismounts ends up being a bit of a grind. Yeah. Because it's painting all those horses and, you know, by the time you get to those little details, sometimes you can have lost a little bit of your motivation. So he was very much a reward for me before Nova, and I believe that he's also the best paint job that I've done. You've, have you seen him? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Do you like it? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Like, really good. By far, I don't even think some of the things I've painted since are anywhere near as good as what he was. I don't know why that is. You've got, to, you've got to really be into it to get your best paint job, haven't you? I think you've got to be painting yeah. constant, consistently. Yeah. Um, well. Because I'm, I'm no stranger to batch painting, and, and that is a tip for, from me that if you if you've got heroes that you want to paint up, do not paint them all at the start, because you will never get the troops painted. You won't do it. Um, yeah, I, I've got about a hundred more orcs painted, and more more to do. Yeah. Um, but the majority of my heroes aren't painted yet, because. I didn't want to get to the point where all my cool models were painted and then... Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense, yeah. And I think uh, Jamie and I, when we were in a speak phone question uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had very different opinions on what we thought um, 
was the best way to sort of stay motivated and mine was very much yeah. the same is that reward yourself with a hero at the end. Definitely, yeah. Or like what about for you? Every what, ten models. What model have you enjoyed painting the most? Uh, Thrall. I thought you might say that. Yeah. That model was amazing to paint. Yeah. Dame, I think Mr. O'Byrne, G. Mitchell Damien said the same. I think it's one of his favourites. Yeah, it's just I uh, enjoyed every single part of painting that again, the gold right, but the amount of detail on that model was incredible. And when the detail's good, you enjoy painting it a lot better. I would agree with yeah. that. I also think, in fact, that answers some other questions that we've had in the past where people have gone, oh, you know, what model, if it went out of stock tomorrow? And I think Thor is one of those that I've realised that, yeah. like, I've, I've said since it came out, that's the most beautiful model that I think Games Workshop have ever done. Like, yeah. I've, I've said that loads of times. You know, whether I still think that or not, I'm not too sure, but he, he is, he's absolutely stunning. As and far yeah, as I don't perfect seem to... recreation of the film, yeah. yeah. And the pose and everything's pretty epic, mm, and, and yeah. it, it's a beautiful, beautiful model, and the detail seems to be great, and I've seen lots of great paint jobs on it. I think if that went out of production tomorrow, I would be a little bit sad, so I do need to get one. So if anybody would like to send me a thrall, I am accepting... Plug, plug, plug. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to, I would, like, I would accept one. Um, and just as a point to your fluffy rules, actually, Mark Furness and I, we obviously we answered this in a uh, speak fan question last week, yeah. and we then went on to have a practice game for Sterling a little bit later on, which we didn't film unfortunately, because uh, we didn't have the time, and it was a bigger points game, um, and we came across one that we think is probably up there, and it's the fact that Saruman can't benefit from any of the, or won't, refuses to benefit from any of Gandalf's heroics and stuff, Saruman the White. I like that rule. I That's just, very cool. Yeah. It's just fluffy. There's no other reason for it to be other than fluff. So I think that, that might be up there with my favourite fluffy rule. Uh, so cheers for that, Nihilus, there. Next up, we've got... I, mean, I had to pick up the um, Champions of Erebor because I didn't want those going out of stock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's some models. beautiful models there. Gorgeous the models. That's the thing, though, isn't it? You know, if you, if you carry on doing this the whole the rest of your life, then you've always got models that you can come back to and yeah. paint, and then you're still getting that experience. Yeah, well, was, did you see Dave Frederick's uh, collection? There? Yeah, he showed me that before. I'll tell you who... Oh, who was it? I can't remember, it was a, somebody on the One Ring. Of <laughs> there was a guy on the One Ring, I can't remember his name, oh, and his was equally intimidating. He, yeah. he took like a wide angled shot of all of his stuff and it was crazy. Uh, so next up we've got Rage Olsen, he's put, Hi guys, I've not played in a Lord of the Rings tournament for a fair few years, but the GBHL has inspired me to get playing again. Well, that's Good. great to hear. Uh, got a couple of questions. One, I'm starting a Corsair army back top with half trolls. Basically the rowers on the ship. I like that idea. Yeah, sounds like a cool idea. They're pretty competitive. Yeah. <laughs> Half trolls are nasty. Uh, notice the description for the Reavers has changed from the old Harad book. They are now listed with War Gear armor. I was planning on converting Moran and Orcs head swapping with Corsair plastics. Will this be okay in a tournament? What, to make what? I think he means to make uh, oh. a Corsair. Make Corsairs by using Moranans. Moranans. Make Corsair Reavers by using Moranans. Well, he's still using. Oh. Right, okay. You still have to do the conversion so that you've got two weapons. That's the key one. The key one with uh, Corsairs. I don't think they personally work for me. The Moranans, his, his style's wrong. Just use your normal Corsairs and then war gear them differently. Yeah. That's what I do. And then remember, they're an elite, that's why they're kind of a little bit higher defense. Yeah. But yeah, using people, what, not, what people normally do is they use normal Corsairs, or what I have seen done is people using. Berserker torsos, like using berserkers and then doing head swap, head swap with Urukai berserkers because then they look a little bit meatier. Yeah. I think it was Stephen Crow who did that. And uh, there's there's some good sort of um, Amazon uh, like tribesmen uh, yeah. metal bodies out there as well, which could be used. Um, the, the key thing with Reavers is two weapons. Yeah. Two weapons and looking pirate like. Uh, and whether it be accepted at a tournament completely depends on which tournament you. I'd like to. to see some armed with oars. <laughs> Two oars. Yeah, well, the half trolls. Oh, the half trolls with oars. That would be really cool. I think that'd be awesome. That's a good idea. Or oh, a big boat hook or something. That's really cool. Mm. I'm not a huge fan of the aesthetic of half trolls. They are very competitive. Fight five, two attacks, two I mean, rooms. Very they good. are half troll, aren't they? I mean, they, as far as the looks wise, the yeah. designs don't be, be done well. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I agree. Um, would it be okay in a tournament? Depends what tournament you go to. Always the best thing to do is take a picture and to send it to the relevant tournament organiser. I think the general rule with conversions is if something, you want to start with the, the main body of what it actually is. So yeah. if you're converting 
Moran and Orcs to be something else, but you're going to still use them as Moran and Orcs. You'd start with the base model of yeah, Moran and sure. Orcs and convert them to be fluffy elsewhere. Yeah. Like with the Arbiter yeah. uh, King, the Golden. Uh, yeah, the, yeah. That's still the Goblin King. It's still the Goblin King, yeah. What's it's still the Goblin King. It's, it's not, it's you're not, not mistaken for anything else. Okay. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, that that's usually a bit of a rule, but again, it depends where you go because what um, I might say, or when Jamie and I work together, what we might say, mm. or when uh, compared to what the guys the in Thailand of proxies. Oh yeah, let's not yeah. go back there again. Yeah. Um, Moving on. And you put they are now listed with Borgia. Oh yes, he said that uh, the captain of the Black Guards rule for the Dark Lord. Uh, does this does this courage six? If your opponent, if you opponent got Ring Wraith or Sauron, hang on. The black captain of the Black Guards rule for rule the for Lord. the Dark Lord. Does this Courage Six? If your opponent got a Ring Wraith or Sauron, neither do I. Bear with me one second. So a toilet and rules break has been had, and we do have an answer. Yes. No. Sorry, mate. Uh, what it, what it is is I've never heard of this rule before. Okay. The rule is, as we've said, uh, for the Dark Lord. Uh, while at least one ring where feels so on himself is alive on the battlefield, a captain of the Black Guard is treated as being Courage Six. Um, so that is for. Well, if you've got a ringwraith on your own side, but it doesn't count, obviously, if the, your opponent's got uh, a ringwraith or Sauron, because that's what how these books aren't written like that. No, these books aren't written like that. They're written as it intended, but I can see where the predicament comes in there, buddy. Mm -hmm. uh, you put the shoot value for a Mordor Siege Bow and War Catabolt are different. 5 plus and 4 plus. Is this a mistake? <laughs> got no idea. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure whether it's a Siege mistake or not. and War Catabolt. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Uh, so that plus, is... Five plus. No one noticed that. I think, check the FAQ. Yeah, have a look at the Mordor FAQ just in case it's a mistake. If uh, if it's not, then go with it. Go with it. Uh, can Floyd, Stonehand, Lawmaster Rule, Cancel, Smell, Special Rules like Breathe, Fire, a Movable Object, etc. Yes. So you, But you pick one and you have to spend more to do it. As long as you've got him in line of sight, you can do that. Uh, if so, it could prove handy in taking on the dragon. Yep, lots of people have uh, theorised that. Uh, keep up the good work. I'm in the loop, so some more questions for next week. We'll look forward to having you uh, having you back next week, buddy. Nice stuff. Okay, so next up, uh, we've only got a few more questions left. Okay. Hello, hello. This is Brad by Hipster. Uh, thanks for the recent feedback on my army list. This week, my question is, are Roan Royal Guard uh, good for their points? Or are they just fluffy warriors? Thanks again. Can't wait for the time next year's tournaments. Okay, so Rohan Royal Guard. Have you used Rohan Royal Guard before? I haven't used them, but I've got them to paint. Much like a lot of my stuff. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's like most things. Okay, so Royal Guard, in my opinion... I think they're good, aren't they? They're pretty good, yeah. They're pretty good. Really. Gives the extra five value you need, and gives you that cool special rule for your heroes. Very much, yeah. So, any, any troop that's got bodyguard... Yeah. Defence six is also important against all that strength three Especially stuff. Especially for Rohan. Well, yeah. Especially for Rohan, especially as well because there are a lot of uh, good armies and elves back in the meta. Mm -hmm. You can see how Royal Guard might have fallen to the side when evil armies dominated the meta uh, not so long ago. So obviously Isengard and things like Moranans and other things that are strength yeah. 4. That fight 4 is going to be really handy as well now. Fight you, 4? You tend to take one as a banner bearer, don't you? I take one as a banner bearer, again mainly... Survivability? Sorry? Survivability. Better survivability versus the potential of that strength three um, shots from the likes of Legolas yeah. or others. Um, so I, I, I think that they're okay. Um, it's all it's all relative to the army list, isn't it? So for ten points, you have to compare them to other things that are ten points. Um, other can guard. Uh, not ten points. Sorry, they are eight points. Oh. Never mind. Um, I think that they are. They're, they're rightly costed, but there are, I think, like, let's say you've got a Khazad, a Khazad Guard is, you know, um, a good example. Um, they get the extra defence for one point more, you know, but then they've not got the movement and stuff like that. I think I think that they're okay. When I, when I um, just to drop this in here, when I won the Kingdoms of Men category at the last throne of Scotland. Oh, did you? 
Yes, I did. Did you? Oh, yeah. nice. okay. I don't know if anybody out there knew that. <laughs> I, think, I think they do now. They do now, if they didn't know before. Um, I actually took, it was a 600 point tournament, I actually took uh, some infantry with my right hand, which I wouldn't normally do, but 600 points is a bit of a funny one. And I took a bunch of Royal Guard on foot. Um, Who was your hero? Uh, I had, uh, Eowyn was leading them, and then there was a banner on horse, Royal Guard, and then I also had four outriders on foot, eight Royal Guard on foot, well, oh, sorry, seven Royal Guard on foot, one mounted right. with a banner, Eowyn mounted, and then I had Erkenbrand with three right Westfold Red Shields and two or three Sons of Ale, and AMR with... And where did you come in that competition again? First, just so you, just so you know. Oh, only in my category, Kings of Men, I think, it was, <laughs> I think I came out third overall, All right, okay. I think. Um, I think it was third overall, or second, third or second. Um, but yeah, so that was um, so that, that was that. So I actually think Royal Guard are pretty good. Um, when you mount them, the thing is that Sons of Ale are just that bit better. Um, so it depends on what points you've got left and stuff. If you can get a Son of Ale, get a Son of Ale. Um, but otherwise, and it's I also because the bodyguard can be quite redundant in an in an Erkenbrand army, in a Rohan army, because of Erkenbrand with plus two courage. Yeah. But then again, versus the likes of Ring Race and things, which minus one courage is helpful. But they look cooler. And they look cool, that's the important thing. Uh, so, thank you very much for that, Brad Thigh Hipster. Oh, Next nice. up, we've got Charmed Balthazar. Yeah. He's put in regards to Bond, the VHS, ta VHS tapes of Pierce Brosnan's films sat on the shelf when I was a kid. So, even though I haven't seen all that many Bond films, it's his face that he ima imagines when he thinks of Bond. Uh, the sword fight in Die Another Day was bleeding awesome. He's put, I think I'll lead the charge into asking more questions about movies. Have you got on your tickets for The Force Awakens yet? And which is your favourite Star Wars movie? Have you got nice. tickets yet? I have. You Star Wars fan? I am. Come on, me too. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the game, Battlefront. Oh, yes, yeah, that's, that's good. awesome. Um, so, yeah, I haven't got my tickets yet. I'll be just like, I'll go in the first week sometime. Same. But I know my brother's got tickets uh, for the first showing. Wow. Yeah. But, a favourite Star Wars movie? Mm. Well, it's got to be one of the originals. It is one of the originals, yeah. clearly. <laughs> Obviously. Uh, if anybody isn't, yeah. who, uh, is there anybody out there who prefers the prequels? Show yourself, yeah. so that we can bully him. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I think... I'm sorry if there are, by the way, I don't I mean that. I think <laughs> the first ones were ruined by the choice of Anakin, both times. The, the guy who plays Anakin in the second and third ones ruined it. I thought the script ruined it. I mean, yeah, the script wasn't and great. And the CGI. Yeah, but it, it had potential. Uh, and I think there's a few things that could have been changed. Uh, I thought the interaction between characters and the script and the dialogue, where you've just got a bunch of people standing around telling you What's going on? Yeah, <laughs> is 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 pretty awful. And like, uh, like explain for example, explaining to you relationships between people. So, like, for example, I think it's in I think it's in Clone Wars. Like when you've got uh, Obi Wan and Anakin yeah. in like a lift thing together, right? and they're explaining oh, yeah. why they're close and stuff like that. And but then they also create this rift. All that anyway. Let's not talk about the prequels because I I just go off on one. What are they? I've forgotten what they are. Yeah, just trying to block them out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what's your favourite one from the original three? You gotta love the first one, haven't you? Really? And it's yeah. yeah, you gotta love the the uh, garbage compactor scene. It's very cool. It's just one of those iconic ones. It's very, very iconic. But I like the, the desert uh, with the, the sand monster thing in the second one. Yeah. Is that Jabba Hutt? No, that's stars? the third one. That's the third one, right. The Return of the Jedi, yes. that one. Yeah, of course. I, I'm gonna, a lot of people say this. I'm, big, I'm a big fan of movie two, The Empire Strikes Back. I think lots of people, I think it's the cliche dancer in lots of ways. But I'm a, I'm a, I'm a huge Darth Vader fan. <laughs> I think he's awesome. I think Darth Vader's awesome. I think so. the, the first three actually just like blew into one for me. Because it just works so well. I was devastated yeah. when my Empire Strikes Back, the videotape, got chewed up in yeah. either TV video. For you remember? kids, we have to watch it on video before. Yeah. I had, a, I had a little TV video, which was amazing. Remember when you had the little the TV and it had a video, oh, yeah, which yeah, was part of the TV, that. and it was up on a little wall bracket. Uh, and it chewed it up. 
and it chewed it up. Um, so then I have to say then probably Return of the Jedi then, then was my next go-to one. But uh, but yeah, uh, thank you very much for that child bar charmed Balthazar. So I suppose the first one was quite a slow introduction, wasn't it? Was very good. Thing, but yeah, very very good. Yeah. One thing that um, spoils it a little bit for me is I can't wait for the new one. Then. I mean, I, I I've got Jane very kindly bought for me the. S all six of them as part of the Blu-ray. Right, yeah, I need to get that. It's pretty good. Very cool, but you know what's very, very upsetting? They remove things out of it, don't they? And change things. They add things. Yeah. They add like ridiculous like CGI, CGI things to the original... Jabba the Hutt. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's one of the most stupid things. Or there's this, like, this music bit where this person's singing. Habba, 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 hula, hula, hula. It, and you just like, In the what? cantina. Um, or in Jabba. Jabba's place. Jabba's place. Yeah. They do like, yeah, it's awful. It's awful. It's like bad CGI piece. Really time. bad CGI, and it has no place in the original. Um, so, anyway, let's move on. Uh, we've got Lord Draconum. Okay. Uh, thanks for the help. I did end up finding some more Berserkers. Uh, <laughs> Berserkers are good. Yeah. They look cool. Um, which helps in the fight against the dwarves. Uh, as well as I found Varusku uh, to replace Lurtz. I have Merha uh, as and Wolfsbane on its way. Okay. Brilliant. Nice. Good heroes. Uh, yeah, Wolfsbane's model looks nice. Yeah, it's lovely. Um, one. Yeah. Um, it would be worth trying to get uh, the ferals. They're hard to find, so uh, converting may be an option. You can convert the part of Berserkers, really, if you think about it. You could do, yeah. yeah. You've got to be willing to put the time in. Yeah. I mean, it is worth trying to get hold of um, Ferals. They are a pretty good addition if you can get them in there. And if not, Berserkers are... I wonder if there's any gladiatorial 28mm models which you could arm swap with. You know, because yeah, they have yeah. the, the, the shoulder bars. Yeah, the yeah. shoulder, and sometimes when they've got that, they've got two weapons. Yeah. Them. Might be worth going checking out something there. Yeah, and then putting an Urukai head on it. Yeah, definitely. I've seen some conversions just from plastic Urukai to make them be mm. wielding two weapons and then people say that they're ferals. Uh, I think with the current meta over here though, uh, Berserkers seem to be getting more playtime now than ferals, whereas before... You can pick them up really cheaply now, yeah. still. They're yeah, still one of the staples that are quite cheap. The Berserkers you can, yeah. yeah. Berserkers are quite a common model and they are some of the best troops in the game. So, so yeah, I hope that uh, I hope that helps Lord Draconum. But yeah, if you can get hold of some ferals, then that, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, so next up we've got Josh Ross. He's put, hi, GBHL James and Jamie. James not here. Uh, massive fan of the show. Keep all the good work. Thank you very much. Uh, he put, I was going to sell my Dunlanding Chieftain and get a Banner Bearer. And I was wondering if you were interested in them, as I know you have a Dunlanding Force. If you are, then you can email me on footyrousey at aol.com. He will have just got loads of emails from random people. I know. I'd better email him first. <laughs> um, thanks. This is my first post on the channel. Not a problem. Um, I'm sure GBHL Jamie will see that. Oh, he might not, actually, because he's going... He's in... Where is he? Is he in Belgium? Wow. Is he in Holland or Belgium? Well, he's not here, anyway. He's not in the UK. He's gone over with Steamforge to do some um, showing off Guild Ball. Oh, that's cool. Have you played Guild Ball yet? No, I haven't. It looks looks interesting though. Yeah, it's good fun. Mm. The models are nice as yeah. well. Yeah, bit of paint nice. to put together, but they're nice models to yeah. paint. Um, so yeah, I'll uh, I'll pass it on to him at the earliest possible convenience. Um, so thanks, Josh Ross, and we're on to our final question. Mm. It's from Dave Egan. It's from Jamie. If I pledge thirty dollars a month to pay, to Patreon, I can get some red GBHL dice. Um, I believe that that's the protocol. So yeah, if you want some of the uh, not the red ones that you see me using that are kind of this colour and pearly and got the um, Redos um, star logo or the gold engraved one. Um, but if you want just the standard sort of red dice and I believe you've got to go onto Jamie's Patreon and support him and I believe that if you do $30 then that's what it comes to. I can have a little look here. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. It's usually in the description. Show more. I hope you all scoured last week's video, by the way, Gilboy Informer. Mm. Okay, supporting GBH Jamie on Patreon. So it is www.patreon.com forward slash GBHL podcast, although it's, it's for Jamie really, not for all of us. Um, $747 a month, I'm doing alright now. Um, Patreon only, goodie bag, uh, merchandise. Yep, so it's $30 or more 
per month for those dice, buddy. Um, and you get like a goodie bag which has got all sorts in there, uh, which is good, which is good. What's he got here? So here's milestone goals. So yeah, when he got $100 a month, he turned it into... So are, are the, all of these available for podcast? Downloadable podcast, are they? Uh, and then for 300 are they? Let's have a little look. I think I heard him say something. Let's just have a little look if they are available. I can't see a, a link in the video description. I'll ask Jamie and see if he's done that. Because um, he's, he's reached all of his milestone goals. Mm. So uh, if you're a Patreon, is he, is he doing these? Uh, turn the podcast into a podcast. So plan to speak for any question will be made available as MP3 downloads for patrons. That has been done. It has been done. I think it's being done. Being done. So. Um, for $300, GBH or Jamie will be able to spend longer editing the videos and make them a more enjoyable watching experience. I've got no idea whether that's whether that's happening or not. You guys on Patreon will be able to say say that. Um, reach editing software. GBH Jamie has upgraded his video editing software to Sony Vegas Pro, which will allow far greater freedom to edit videos and do cool stuff. So it's good to see that he's um, that he's passed his yeah, milestone shows you goals. Guys are supporting him. Shows you guys are supporting him. Let us know um, how that's going. So that brings us to the end of Speak Fan Questions. Yes. So we better get on a film's about what's Have you found it? Okay. Yeah. Been good stuff. Been thank, good. thank you very much for joining me here and uh, offering some opinions. Thank you very much. And uh, we're going to go and film some content now. So as ever, don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. Plus to Jamie on Patreon if you get a chance. If you want to support Jamie, uh, make sure that you like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Support your hobby, hobby, and happy strategy battle gaming. <laughs>